thanks to the supporters of channel member Dan Taylor. I'll believe you, Mrs. Weirmer, if I'm more excited than you are that Slam Dunk's back in town. I love the fact that he's a Premier League manager now. It is, uh, it's brilliant. Yeah, we, we get Mark, get Mark involved. The four of us can can go out and have a jolly good time after the match. Yeah, I, I realise he made it to the Premier League much quicker than I did as a manager. Yeah. No, no, I, I don't, I don't think we should hire him back. We're, we're good with the manager we've got. Thanks. Hello and welcome to part 104 of Homegrown. I'm Kevin. Coming up on today's episode, we have our final two games of the season. We're away against Blackburn and at home to Slam Dunk's Birmingham. That's right. Slam Dunk is the new manager of Birmingham. Um, he, when did he arrive? I mean, that's not how I remember Slam Dunk looking. He's getting old. He's only 39. This is ridiculous. Um, but Slam Dunk arrived in Birmingham. Do we get to find out the exact date he arrived? Um, or are we going to have to look this up? Because it's been something of a turnaround for Birmingham. So Slam Dunk arrived on the 1st of March. He's been there 67 days. Um, and this is what's happened to Birmingham since then. They were hovering around. There you go. That's That was the last match before Slam Dunk arrived. Match day 28. They were just outside the relegation zone. Slam Dunk's come in. Um, lost to Man United initially, but then lost to Arsenal, but then drew against West Ham, but then started to climb the league. And as you can see, a couple of victories for Slam Dunk, and he finds his Birmingham side pretty comfortable. 14th place, four points clear of the relegation zone. If we have to let him win on the last day, believe me, we'll be letting him win. Slam Dunk gets to stay as a Premier League manager. He's my, he's my big buddy. Uh, as far as we're concerned, we've had... A, a pretty mixed run into the season. We've actually changed the the system. I figured, why not experiment with a different tactic for the final few weeks of the season when we don't really have anything to play for? We can always go back to the four two three one next year if we decide we want to. But we've been playing a four two four, um, specifically a four two four that looks a lot like that. So, um, at the moment, it's Hodgkinson and Ali Basic up front, which you lot probably think I'm insane, um, because they could be our midfield and we could have. Um, Costa Bile and Lukinas up front but ultimately it's Hodgkinson and uh, maybe not Ali Bassett quite so much you've been scoring the goals um, Costa Bile's actually been doing quite well you can tell I was playing through the in betweeny bits whilst also recording my podcast and not really focusing on the fact that Costa Bile's actually playing quite well we beat Liverpool 3-0 away from home Kenlin Richardson's superb and we're ninth in the Premier League 50 points on the board already and um, realistically we're finishing ninth because there's 5 points either side of us, and I don't think we're going to have a five-point swing in this last episode. So ninth um, or tenth even would be our highest ever finish in the history of the football club. So it has been a good season. Uh, Money-wise, it's still flowing in. We've spent most of next season's transfer budget already. I can't remember if we've got any of these guys who you hadn't already met. I think the five that are definitely coming in, you already know about. There's a couple more that I'm currently negotiating with. Obviously, we can only sign one of them unless we decide to bin off uh, Bompastor, the guy who's coming in in January, and maybe push him back a year, similar to how we did with Pasotti. So we might end up doing that and going with both of these two uh, both of these two guys as we try and basically build a midfield and attack um, capable of capable of pushing us towards the Europa League. I know, I know there's been a lot of criticism of our defence and my defensive selections this year and how you want Sir Harrison Davies involved in the back four, and I get it. But ultimately, we've got two wonder kids at the back. Um, we've got a lot of talent at fullback. We've got a very good goalkeeper, an England goalkeeper. Um, we've got Harrison Davies as backup. We've got Jörn Anderson as backup. Our defence, I think, is solid. Um, wingers are solid to a point. I'm still not sold on my right wing, but with Richards and Richardson on the left, we're certainly good there for years to come. What we need to do is figure out these four and who's going to be playing in central midfield, attacking midfield, up front, what combinations we're going to use. So I'm just bringing in a lot of players in those kinds of positions, and hopefully a few of them will stick. That's the plan. Uh, but the other part of the plan is to show you the 4-2-4 in action. So here we go. We're going with Williams in goal. It's a back four of McCartan, Aboy, Ab Abogai. Someone's been telling me there's a correct way to say it, and I can't remember what it was. So we're just going with Abogai from now on. Abogai, Fazekas, and Gillespie. Curry and Christian in midfield. Richardson and Sebastiao out wide with Hodgkinson and Alibasic up front. The thing you'll really notice there is we don't really have a striker on the pitch, even, even though um, Hodgkinson, Alibasic, Sebastiao, Curry, 
Christian can all play. Richardson probably. No, Richardson can't actually. They can all play as striker, uh, but none of them are what you'd class as an out and out striker. I imagine if you did the uh, if you did the bit on the telly where they turn to camera and say Kieran Hodgkinson midfielder. None of them, I think, are going to say striker, and that's what we need. We someone we need someone who's going to turn to camera, say striker, and. Uh, hopefully grab us a whole bunch of goals next year. But who knows? Maybe that man is already at the club. We've got a lot of young strikers knocking around who maybe just need time and a little bit of patience and a little bit of a little bit of game time. Maybe they could have used this run-in where I've been playing two older midfielders up front. Maybe we could have got, done eight games with Costa Bile and Lukinas up front and they'd be, they'd be the greatest partnership in the history of the world by now. But we didn't do that because we did this instead. Um, Curry... Plays it back to Fazekas, who's looking for Ali Basic, who can't win the ball. And uh, Blackburn seem to be knocking it around very, very quickly here. It, it almost feels like the game speed has been taken up a notch. I'm fairly confident that's not what's happened. But Blackburn are playing very quickly and have grabbed a goal. Um, it was 1-0 to Blackburn after only six minutes. See, on the replay, things seem to be moving at a normal speed. Just as that was happening, it looked all looked a little bit too quick for us to keep up with. And... Um, I have Williams beaten at the near post. Not ideal. I'll try not to draw attention to it because the Jack Green fan club will come at me. But um, Williams probably could have done a little bit better there. Fazikas as well. Um, who, by the way, there's been a little bit of criticism for Fazikas. You know how last year Ola Richards finished second in the Next Gen Award? Um, well, this year, Fazikas won it. Now, if that's, if that's an, ide an idea of who's the best young player in the world, well, apparently at the moment... It's Janos Fazikas of home. This guy, Luis Herrera, we've been trying to sign, um, but or we were trying to sign, uh, but we realised his birthday was in April, so he's going to turn 19 too soon, or he would have been in. He was on my shortlist. And this guy, Pascal Jolie, um, we can't prize him away from Wren. I think the problem is they're a bigger club than we are. I would love to bring him in, but there's no mention of a fee. And his agent says we're not good enough to take him. So I don't think we're going to get him either. But this is quite a nice little scouting resource for us now. But there's your proof that our uh, our scouts are doing their job. Two years in a row now, a little club like home, getting a, getting a player in the final three for the next gen award. Ola Richards the year before, who we then proceeded to drop. Um, so Fazikas presumably loses his place in the team next year. You'll all be delighted to see the return of Sir Harrison Davies in the season in which he turns 30. So end of next year, Sir Harrison Davies theoretically should finally get his testimonial. As long as the, if the rules are the way they've always been, I think the rules in FM are you have to have been at the club at least 10 years and you have to be over 30 and then you'll get a test or then you're able to have a testimonial. There are some people who think you also have to have announced your retirement. I'm like 90% sure that's not the case because I've had testimonials before. So that will be a, that's a new thing if you also have to have announced your retirement. And realistically, I don't think Sir Harrison Davies is going to retire at home unless he retires very early because we've already had a couple of those conversations where he's come to me saying he's ready for a new challenge. He feels he's achieved all he can at home. And I kind of get it. He's not a regular starter for us now. Um, he's about to turn 30. He's now lost his place in the Welsh national team. Um, last year, he'd actually got into being a regular starter for Wales. I think he got up to eight caps, having only had that one cap at the start of the season that he'd got years before. He made he played seven times for Wales last year. He's not played for them at all this year. He's lost his place at home. Um, I think if I were him, I would probably too be looking for a move to a championship club where I could play every week. Maybe Maybe move to posh. And then he doesn't have to move house. We're getting absolutely battered here by Blackburn. I'm talking about moving Harrison Davies on. Meanwhile, our defence are playing like they've never been involved in a football match before. I'm not quite sure what's going on. Where are Blackburn in the league? How are they doing this to us? We've not been this bad at any point during this run. I don't really understand how, um, how they're ruining us. Quite how they're ruining it. I mean, what what is happening? They are rampant. I need to see where Blackburn are in the league so I can work out if this is if this is something that we should have been expecting to happen or if we've just turned up and we're having a terrible day because I don't really understand. I mean, I know our midfield is weak today with Christian playing as the Mazala. He hasn't been playing there much through this run that we've been on playing in this system. We've tried different midfielders and playing as a Mazala is the only thing Christian can really do in central midfield. I guess I could have played him 
on the right wing, but I wanted to get Sebastiao back in the team. And the big noticeable poor performance is from Ali Basic, though. So we're going to take him off. We're going to bring on Lukinas. That can be our half-time change. And where, where, where are Blackburn in the league? They're 19th. What the hell's going on? This is unacceptable. Demand more. Attacking. Probably should have made that midfield change. Gillespie with the cross. Hodgkinson's there. And there's a 10th goal of the season for Kieran Hodgkinson, who is very much enjoying life as this second striker. He's he's pretty got pretty much got this role nailed down, I think. After, what, 12 years of Kieran Hodgkinson, we might have finally found this position. It's not even as a complete forward. It's this deep-lying forward um, just tucked in alongside another striker. And he is a he's a goal threat from there. He links play up nicely from there. He really does look like he suits that role. So the job might just be finding the guy who's going to play alongside him. The only issue is when Hodgkinson's playing there, he's not playing here. And we are then a little bit weaker in central midfield. So what we really need is a second Kieran Hodgkinson, which we don't really have currently. Uh, right, we are going to take Christian off now. In fact, I'm going to take Sebastiao off. And we'll bring Zapatar on in midfield, who we have used in this role a few times. Um, Zapatar has kind of re-emerged. I think I mentioned it in the last episode. He went out on loan. He's come back as a three-star current ability central midfielder. Um, with five, still with his five-star potential as well. If we look at him on the midfield list, um, he's right up there with Nathan Curry, Ernie Grucock, and then Hodgkinson and Ali Basic are way ahead of everybody else and probably should be our starting midfielders. Zapatar has surged up the surged up the list of how good our midfielders are. So he's the one who's actually played a lot of these games on this run. Um, right, last contribution to this team I want to make. Who are we? Where's Ola Richards? Why is he not on the bench? I wanted to bring him on. Um, we can't. We've got Loy who could come on. I don't really. You know what? We're going to bring on Harrison Davies. You don't love a bit of Harrison Davies. He can come on. Um, Abagai can move over to the other side and we've got Harrison Davies there as a potential goal threat and to hopefully grab us by the scruff of the neck and drag us back into this game. Lukinas has done well to get in there, play it back to Hodgkinson. Lukinas is surely fouled there. He went down hard. If he's not fouled, he needs to sort his life out and stay on his feet in situations like that because he had a goal opportunity there and decided to just fall over instead. Um, Davies has been spun around like... Uh, like a spinny thing there. Um, Fast-paced football, not really Harrison Davies's forte, bless him. Um, corner comes in, Zapatar is there on the near post to head clear, but only as far as a Blackburn player who turns and looks to get it back into the thick of the action, but the highlight peters out and it's time for me to demand more again. We've got 20 minutes-ish of this game remaining, probably closer to 15, and there's Davies with a dominant headed clearance, but we have no midfield, but Hodgkinson is there, Playing deep. This is what I mean. Hodgkinson always plays as an attacking midfielder when he's in that role. Lukinas has done really well until the finish, but David Hodgkinson's there again. Kieran Hodgkinson is up for this. We might be looking at a new captain here, boys and girls, because if Sir Harrison Davies is drifting solely out of the team, and um, Nathan Curry at the moment is vice captain, so he's been wearing the captain's armband a lot this season, but I'm seeing leadership qualities in Kieran Hodgkinson right now. I'm thinking he might have to take over as vice captain so that he's the one who's leading us because, goodness me, does he seem up for it today? I mean, ultimately, we've lost. So probably not the day to decide to change your captain around. But still, it's not going to affect where we finish this season. It doesn't really matter. And now we get what we're all here for today, the reunion once again with Slam Dunk. How many times are we going to face this man on the last day of the season? It's already starting to feel like it's destined, it's written in the stars that the final episode of the entire series is going to be home versus whoever Slam Dunk is managing in a Champions League final. And it just feels like that's how it's all going to end. It's setting itself up that way. And if that happens, hats off to your football manager. That's some excellent scripting. Let's go play Slam Dunks Birmingham. Right, a couple of changes for the final game of the season against Slam Dunks Birmingham. We've moved Christian out onto the right-hand side. Ali basic has gone back into central midfield um, to replace him to try and give us a little bit more oomph in there. And we brought Costa Bile in up front to replace Ali basic And also Gillespie drops down to the bench. Abagai's going to go over to right-back where he's actually 
pretty good at being a right wing back, apparently. We've not actually ever tried to play him there. And Sir Harrison Davies comes back in at centre back because how could I not play Sir Harrison Davies against a team managed by Slam Dunk? Slam Dunk is one of the reasons Harrison Davies emerged as a hero. Without the Slam Dunk corner, would we have fell in love with Harrison Davies to the extent that we fell in love with Harrison Davies? He's always been a very good defender, but those. 10, 15 goal seasons back when we were down in non-league with him and Danny Pritchard lurking at the near post and slam dunk landing it on their heads time and time again. That's what made Sir Harrison Davies a legend. And uh, now he's just adding to the legend with the whole being our captain in the Premier League thing. Ali Basic's done well running from midfield here. Plays it across to Nathan Curry. Of course, another one who will uh, remember playing with slam dunk. And um, Nathan Curry kind of took over the mantle of taking the slam dunk corners when Slam Dunk moved on, obviously from the other side. He's a right footer rather than a left footer. It's been a long time since Nathan Curry's taken a corner. Um, he's not really up there with the uh, some of our corner-taking heroes that we have now. Um, but here's Abagai on the right-hand side trying to trying to push himself forward as a right wing back. And he's won us, won us a free kick in a very dangerous area. And the Birmingham player has actually been sent off, which seems a little harsh. But again, in a world where we still had Slam Dunk in the team... That would have been a perfect position for him to stick that in-swing into the near post for Pritchard or Davis to head home. But apparently, it's not to be. And we approach half-time still nil-nil. And, and yet another example of how we really desperately need a goal scorer. <laughs> Richardson with the corner, aiming for Davies at the near post. Probably should have had Nathan Curry hitting the in-swinger there. We've got to score a slam-dunk corner against slam-dunk side, surely. Let's make sure... All corners are going to be in-swingers for the rest of the game. So corner takers, um, we want Nathan Curry taking them from that side. And yeah, Richardson or McCartan taking them from the other side. That works for me. All corners are in-swingers, boys and girls. Let's see if we can give it, get ourselves a slam dunk corner against slam dunk for old time's sake. Christian, not seen much of him yet today. Um, Curry. Doing good work in midfield, playing it across to Ali Basic, who's got McCartan in acres of space. He plays it across to Christian. Lovely ball into Hodgkinson and a very good save from the Birmingham goalkeeper. And now we have the opportunity for the slam dunk corner. It's Richardson looking to hit that near post. But weirdly, Harrison Davies not lurking where you'd normally expect him to lurk. The corner was just about perfect, but Davies not quite getting his positioning right that time. And we don't end up getting the shot away at goal. Um, Davies got his positioning exactly right that time, though. And it's now Hodgkinson who's dropped back into midfield again. This is why I like him so much in this deep line forward role. Because now he's making that Paul Scholes style run. And um, the David Platt run. Just the late burst into the penalty area. And um, he doesn't quite... Uh, well, I say he doesn't get there. The, the guy who had the ball, I think it was Curry, didn't really notice that Hodgkinson had made that late burst into the penalty area and just ignored him and didn't put it onto his head, which is a little bit unfortunate. Um, 66 minutes gone now. Against 10 men, we're still not ahead. We need a goal scorer, and we need him badly. Hodgkinson doing some good chasing down, trying to put some pressure on their Birmingham defenders and midfielders. But look at the amount of space everyone else is giving him. Nathan Curry's supposed to be a ball-winning midfielder. Why is he giving that guy all that time to just stand there? There's no pressing going on in that midfield. We're supposed to be playing a, a variant of a Gagan press system. And we just gave them all the time in the world there. I don't understand what I've just seen. Nathan Curry, we need to have a word after this match. Um... I guess it's only fair that we give Slam Dunk his win back after he single-handedly let us get promoted to the Premier League. We'll call this we'll call this one all Slam Dunk, and I feel like our our battle isn't yet over. It might not even be over today. Um, Abagai's had a terrible game at right back. We'll take him off. Jern Anderson can come on and play there, and um, we're also going to get Lukinas on for you know what? I'm going to bring him on for Hodgkinson, and we're going to try Lukinas and Costa Bile together as the front two. And then who else have we got on the bench that we might want to have a look at? Ola Richards is knocking around the place. Um, let's get Ola Richards on. But we're going to put him on that side. In fact, we're going to put Richardson on that side as an inverted winger. And Richards can be the winger there. 
Um, Lukinas as a false nine then lurking around behind Costa Bile. Curry with the slam dunk corner looking for looking for Davies again. Costa Bile tries to get it back into the area. There is Davies and now Curry back to Davies again. He's Harrison Davies did a cross. I mean, it's a terrible one. But it's lovely to see him getting involved. He's, he's channeling his inner slam dunk there with a cross from the left wing. Beautiful stuff from Harrison Davies. But we are now in trouble as... Birmingham look to break on us here and Dave and Richards needs to close down the Birmingham player and doesn't. We have been poor today. I think I think we're probably starting next season back with a 4-2-3-1. We're leaving ourselves far too exposed in midfield by playing just the two men in there. Maybe we could even drop back to a 4-4-2, but I don't know if I can bring myself to do that. And Birmingham have now gone 2-0 up and they're, they're good value for it. They're down to 10 men. They've got an excellent manager. I hope Mrs. Weirmouth isn't paying too much attention because I can I can see it now. Um, slam dunk Mark Weirmouth management team coming in and taking over from me if we have a bad season. And we don't need to see the replay of that. What we do need to do is wake this lot up who they've been difficult to motivate since they realised they were definitely finishing in ninth place. And we're seeing it again today. This has just been a very poor performance. They've they've made my mind up about the four two four. Can we at least have a slam dunk corner? I, I've kind of set us up to try and get one of those, and even that doesn't look like it's happening. They are knocking the ball around us as if our defenders are not there. And for those of you who have been in the Harrison Davies is great camp, this is a defence that Davies is in that's conceded three goals now. You can't tell me we've been poor defensively because we've not been playing him because we've played him here. I think we probably need a holding midfielder sat in front of that back four. And it might even, that might even be the way that Davies gets back into the team on a regular basis because Abagai would be the obvious one. He's a natural libero. He could sit in front of the back four or maybe even do a back three and have him play as a libero. They're down to nine men now and they're still beating us 3-0. <laughs> this, is, this is one of the worst performances in the history of home football club. And they're now playing with no strikers. What slam dunk? What is this that you're doing here? You're a genius, clearly. And um, well, I'm fuming. <laughs> Thrash the arms. Slam dunk is going to be no. I mean, I'm not going to live that down all summer. I'm just going to. It's just going to be this in my ear all the time. I have to get a new phone. Slam dunk. Well played, sir. It won't be that easy next time we face off against each other. I hope. Oh my word. If you've enjoyed that, please make sure you leave a nice big thumbs up on there for me. Subscribe to the channel for daily football manager videos. And thank you very much for watching.